Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today we bring to you episode 366. The Marines Becoming Plant-Based with Andy Nevers. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we talk with Andy Nevers about masculinity, the Marines, and becoming plant-based. Andy shares with us how documentaries changed his whole life and helped him become plant-based, and really how he decided to join the movement. We explore how masculinity and nutrition can have certain expectations, especially for big military personalities. He proudly joined the United States Marine Corps in 2004, where he served a a total of eight years on active duty with the Marines. And he walks us through what nutrition is like in the field and if being plant based, vegan, or even vegetarian is even an option. Andy is the founder and CEO of a DC based tech startup company called Plantarian. His company's on a mission to help make the world a healthier place. In addition to helping people reap the health benefits of plant based living, Andy's startup is working with various organizations to help with eliminating animal cruelty associated with factory farming, as well as help our environment by reducing our carbon footprint. This is a very interesting episode that I think you'll really enjoy. So if you get ready to share it out. I have amazing news. We've updated our 21 day plant powered party to be the 28 day plant based party. We've added more content, weekly Zoom meetings, and we gave the Facebook group a new look and we are changing lives already. This is when you say, I can finally do this with people who can support me, make sure I'm doing it right and always have my back. The plant based party is for you if you've been eyeing the plant based lifestyle for a while but haven't had the guts to do it, or you're ready to jump in but you feel uncertain that you'll get all the nutrients you need, if you're ready for a challenge or cleanse to reboot your body, but the plant-based party is not for you if you don't want to see the healing properties of food, if you're just looking to lose 10 pounds before your sister's wedding and then you're going to go back to your old ways, or if you don't believe or don't want to believe that the plant-based lifestyle can lower cholesterol regulate your blood sugar levels, and increase your energy to fight inflammation. So many spots are already taken and we're only taking 20 people. So if you want a chance to hop into this plant-based party, you need to go to planttrainers.com slash 28, the numbers 28, and join right now for just $97. You're going to get all the content, all the audio, all the videos, all the cheat sheets. You're going to get Zooms with us, a Facebook group to ask questions with personalized answers for you, and get ready to rock your world go to plantrainers.com slash 28 and get those last spots now and now for a moment of gratitude i'm extremely grateful because i have set some big audacious goals for myself and have actually achieved them in this time over the last couple of weeks and now as i sit down to reevaluate what my next set of goals are going to be i just find myself so grateful for being able to help so many people and being in the position that I'm in. I'm grateful for all the feedback we've been getting from everyone who signed up for our seven day smoothie challenge. They've been loving those recipes and we've been enjoying the pictures and the comments that we've been getting back. So thank you for being a part of that. Andy Nevers, thanks so much for joining us on the Plant Trainers podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm, you know, I'm excited to sit down and chat and, you know, learn a little bit more about you guys and share a little bit about myself as well. Yeah, we would love to hear more about you. And before we do, do you have a moment of gratitude that you want to share with us and the listeners? Hey, you know, so I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm, I'm grateful, first of all, to be alive today, you know, especially in a time when things are so scary all around the world. Fortunately, I'm big on family and, you know, all of my loved ones are safe and everybody is doing well. So every day that I wake up and that's, you know, that remains the same. I'm I'm grateful for that. Yeah. And I, I loved thinking about what I'm grateful for when I wake up first thing in the morning. And I definitely think about my immediate family, my extended family, people's health and and all of that. So I think that a lot of people can hear you on that one. And I think being plant-based is part of that for you, right? Tell us a little bit about your plant-based journey and how that's changed your life and your health. Yeah. I, you know, plant going plant-based is definitely going to change your life. It's going to change your life in more ways than 
than you um, you you could ever imagine or expect it when you start out on the journey. And so same for me. You know, I saw the documentaries, What the Health and Forks Over Knives were the first two that I saw. It, it got me curious. Uh, it was, a, you know, it was more curiosity than anything else. And, you know, for me, it was doctors saying that, hey, you know, we are on the reactive side of medicine and really we need to think about being more proactive and, you know, consider the things that we're eating. And I'm a common sense guy, you know. If it makes sense and it sounds like, hey, you know, this is what we should be doing, I don't need to wait for, you know, to break down the science and everything, you know, but, but I, again, that started my curiosity and, you know, I, it was late one night that I sat down and I watched these two documentaries to get started and the following day, I was just, I was so sort of, you know, that curiosity led me to saying, you know, I immediately want to try this and, and so, you know, Looking back at it now, I tell people I went cold turkey vegan, but I wasn't thinking that I was going to go cold turkey vegan. I was thinking that, hey, you know, I want to try this thing that they're talking about. And it at that time, it was more about like the health benefits that I heard, you know, because, you know, truth be told, I wasn't so conscious about like animal welfare or, you know, environmental concerns. I just, you know, I made the connection that it's a healthier way to live. And, you know, people are getting all these diseases that are food related. You know, for me, it was just like, how come I didn't hear about this before? You know, this stuff is happening and it seems to be happening far and wide. And I'm just learning about it. So I got up and I, you know, decided, OK, so. All right. I, I don't know what to eat. Right. But I'm going to figure this out. You know, the only thing I know is that, you know, I've been eating a certain way my whole life. And, and for the most part. What I gathered from the documentaries was that, OK, you cannot eat that same way anymore. So that was my starting point. And I remember I had the first meal that next day that was, you know, 100 percent plant based. And it just it felt like I wasn't really having a meal. It just felt very odd. You know, it was like something was missing from the plate. And I just kept, you know, I'm the type of person, once I make a commitment to trying or doing something, I just, I stick with it. But it was really challenging. It wasn't as easy because, you know, you get through the first day, you get through another day. And, you know, as the days start to pile up, you start to think, man, you know, I miss eating this kind of food or I miss eating that you know, you're, you're kind of wrestling with yourself, essentially. But one thing that happened was a, a few things happened. First, I started feeling so much better just health wise. I was sleeping better. I would go on runs and I would get all these kind of flare ups, you know, uh, joint pain and stuff. And I noticed that I was running a lot longer, wasn't feeling any pain. And this the, the thing that was so magical for me was it's all started happening so quickly. You know, for the first time, too, in my life, I was starting to gain weight because I for the first time I was sitting behind my computer um, almost all day, you know, as a tech entrepreneur and as someone that worked a full you know day job. And so I just, you know, from the time I wake up in the morning almost till the time I go to sleep, I was sitting behind a computer. And so. I started gaining some weight and I tell you, um, I always pride myself in being healthy and being fit and looking, you know, just lean sort of that, that military background that I, that I have. And so just to see the weight just fell off, you know, without anything that I had to do extra in terms of like going to lift weights or, you know, working out longer, everything just, it was just like magical. You know, I saw it like a silver bullet, right? So I started feeling better. I started losing the weight that I just, I was so concerned. I was growing more and more concerned about it actually, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. And even till today, not so much today, I think, cause I've been plant-based now for about three years, over three years, but leading up to this point, there were times where I would go to like a summer barbecue and, you know, I would see people eating the, the regular stuff and, you know, I'm tempted, but I stuck with it. And, you know, I feel like I just continue to read the benefits, but I could get into more of a, about sort of my evolution and where I am today. But I know you guys just kind of wanted to hear how did this start it for you? And, you know, those documentaries were got, what got me curious in the first place. But then, you know, it was just kind of a building block from there. It was just like it's like an eye opener. Right. You know, you you get into it, you know, very little. And the more you learn, the more you become sort of aware, you know. 
and you're like, oh man, I've been living the wrong way my whole life in terms of food. Um, so that's, that's kind of my discovery of the whole thing, you know, but yeah, that's, to answer you guys' question, that's, that's what I was thinking. I love that I'm talking to another version of myself, it seems. Uh, right. You and I. Cold yeah. vegan tofu. <laughs> cold turkey. <vegan. laughs> cold to tofu overnight and yeah. uh, made the decision for health reasons. And those documentaries were impactful as well. What the health wasn't out yet because it was five years earlier that I started. But uh, Forks Over Knives was there. Definitely impactful and yeah. uh, allows me to be here today because I was told I wouldn't be for those people that are listening know yeah. my story and know that at the age of 40, I was told I would no longer be on this planet, but wow. the change in nutrition and lifestyle allowed me to be here and yeah. um, live in a great life. And I, our story is somewhat similar and our haircut is very similar and it's a beautiful <laughs> one and <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's great to have you here. A great story. Uh, glad yeah. you're, you found this lifestyle and things are going well for you. So how did you find that first documentary? What made you come stumble across it? So my, I had started dating someone and she was plant-based and I like how she approached it. She wasn't very forceful because I had dated a, a vegetarian before and she didn't really... She didn't really talk to me much about the lifestyle. The only thing that I knew is that she didn't eat any meat. She would have some dairy, but no meat. And I, you know, she would tell me that eating meat is bad. It's no good. But that's, that's to the extent we had a conversation about food, you know. But this uh, new girlfriend that I had, she was just like, you know, she would drop hints. And she would say, hey, you know, I think you should really check out these documentaries. Because she was getting to know me and she knew the type of person that I was, she figured that, just giving me the documentaries was sort of the thing that would make the most impact as opposed to like, you know, trying to explain it to me because those documentaries, as you guys know, it, it really sort of, you know, it has credibility because of the people that are in it and the stuff that they're talking about just makes so much sense. And if you're, if you're the type of person that's open-minded like I am and you watch these documentaries, there's no way for you to say, to discredit everything that you see there. Because I think they're well put together and, you know, there's a lot of credibility and there's a lot of logic. You know, I'm a very logical person. So where does your manhood fit in all this being a combat Marine? And, you know, like I think of military people as needing to be men and eat meat and, you know, follow, fall in and be like everybody else, you know. Uh, being, being Canadian, yeah, we have an army, but I, our army life isn't as as there in our eyes. So I kind of see what I see in movies and how yeah. he's just the same and you have to show that you're a bigger man than the next person. So how did your ego fit into it? No, that's an interesting question. And you know, it's one that I'm still sort of, um, sort of, uh, getting adjusted to, um, honestly, but you know, when I started out, you're right, you're right that, you know, cause the culture in the military, especially in the Marine Corps that I was a part of, you know, as an active duty Marine, our culture is such that, it, you know, it's not about sort of being, uh, it's all about being manly all the time, right? And a lot of my buddies right now, I, I can't imagine. So we have these sort of reunions that happen, and I can't imagine walking up to one of these reunions and trying to convince my, you know, a, a pool of my buddies, like, look, you guys should all stop hunting, all stop doing the things that you grew up doing, eating meat and stuff and follow me and go plant-based. I can't imagine that, you know, coming over, you know, being very receptive. But for me, it's just, I've always done the things that made the most sense to me. You know, I wasn't one of those people that grew up knew and that I was going to go to the Marine Corps. But at some point, like after 9-11, I, I said that, you know, I've always cared about people and I wanted to join and I wanted to serve and I wanted to, you know, just kind of be a part of making a difference. And, you know, I was also trying to find my way as a youngster as I was getting out there. And the Marine Corps just seemed like a very natural fit for me at the time. And I really embraced the culture while I was in. And, you know, and, and certainly it wouldn't have worked for 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 me to be for anyone to be plant based currently in the military, because the stuff that you are sort of provided to eat, you know, is it's not inherently plant based and it 
you know, there's there's going to be some work to be done if we are ever going to sort of transition military to go plant based. The food has to be, you know, packaged and be able to last for a certain amount of time. And, you know, it's not always you're not always able to get fresh food in, you know, that's never, that's not always the priority. And so, but again, like your question was, you know, it's just sort of the ego and the, um, the manliness. It, it, it is something that I still, because now I have, interestingly enough, now that I've evolved in my, in my sort of plant-based thinking, uh, and um, I'm also fully on board with sort of animal welfare, because the thinking is, Hey, you know, if we don't have to slaughter animals for food, why are we doing it? And so now I have buddies, believe it or not, who are still, you know, killing animals for, you know, for just the pure enjoyment of it. And then they consume the animals. Right. And they post these things on on social media. And so it, it floats through my feed. But what am I, you know, I'm not going to like unfriend my Marine Corps buddies because it's still sort of it's like it's a conflict that's it's creating a conflict within me. And I think that it's just part of just, you know, understanding that you are you you have a you have your own personal decisions to make. And, you know, I made a decision to go plant based because it made a whole lot of sense to me. And right now I am advocating for plant based living, but I'm not going to be so forceful and or, you know, try to make it seem like I'm better than anybody else. But I tell you, it's 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 a it's a struggle from that perspective, because, you know, it was like I grew up in the military where it was like more meat, the better, more meat, you know, more manly. And, you know, that that was sort of the equation. And so, yeah, it's it's been it's been interesting. Do you find that there's been a shift at all over the last three years in the people that you've been hanging around with and their acceptance versus their pushback? No, that's a good question too. But you know, one thing that I've noticed, my my circle sort of expanded a lot more toward like plant-based folks. I don't think I purposefully go out and say, hey, I want to meet more plant-based friends. I just, you know, the places that I tend to go to now, you know, are more plant plant-based friendly restaurants, for example. You know, I, I have a tech startup that it, it revolves around plant-based living. And so a lot of the people that I meet now are inherently, you know, more and more plant-based people that I'm meeting. I still have friends, of course, that are not plant-based. And and so, like, for example, when I go to my barbershop to get a haircut, which I haven't gone there in a little while, um, you know. Wonder why. <laughs> right, right. So they, they make fun of me because, you know, it's like, here comes the vegan guy, you know, and and people, you know, go out their way to to let me know why they would never be vegan. That's, that's one of the things that happens, right? People, you don't, you don't go in there trying to, trying to convince anyone to go vegan, but all of a sudden everybody feel like they need to let you know, like, look, you know, I am going to eat meat and you're not going to stop me. And you're like, okay, well, you know, I don't know why we're having this conversation, but they, their guards go up and they get defensive about their lifestyle, which, I mean, I can relate because, you know, I haven't been vegan my whole life too. So, yeah. Yeah. And you could kind of try to think back to how you may have reacted if you were on the other side of it as yeah. well. I want to run back if we can to the military a little bit. And what happens if there are people who are allergic to certain foods or are halal or kosher or something like that? Are exceptions made for them? You know, there are certain um, religious and, 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 and certain cultural acceptance in the military. But generally speaking, in, in the military, is kind of an interesting place because it, it all depends on sort of the tempo, meaning like, you know, if we're we're at war, then they're more lenient in terms of making exceptions because they want to expand the force. They want to grow the numbers. But if we're not really heavily involved in, you know, a number of conflicts, which you know, sort of hasn't been the case in the past few decades. They're not so, so, um, you know, but the general, uh, you know, the general idea is that if you have food allergies and so on, you're, you're not going to be permitted to join the military, at it's least not the Marine that I served in, because you're going to be required to sort of live a fast paced lifestyle. You're going to be in remote places where, you know, it's not going to be, you You know, we can't cater to your your special needs. You know, from a custom perspective, too, I know some people would, 
you know, don't eat pork and stuff like that. There's, I mean, there's usually enough food where you you don't have to consume a particular item if, if that, that's what your culture is. But generally speaking, there's usually not a whole lot of exception to cater to your particular um, interests. So if you could think back to while you were there, let's say you were vegan while you were there or you decided to go vegan while you were there, would you have been, had enough to eat to be sustained to do your job properly based on what was there or would you have to have become maybe like a visual vegan where if you don't see the animal products, they're not really there just so that you can kind of you know, get by, how would you have been able to manage that? Just wanted to pop in here to let you know that our plant-based party is coming up so soon. And here's what Carmen from the USA had to say about our program. The accountability is what I needed to begin a new lifestyle. This program is excellent. No judgment, only support from real people. The live chats and posts make it easy to stay on track. I am continuing with the program because I have a lot to learn. And the cravings have stopped. I feel real hunger and eat when I'm hungry. Thank you, Shoshana and Adam, for all your support and inspiration. If you're ready to grab one of those last spots, get into it now because this is an updated and improved program that you have the opportunity to join us for. Go to plantrainers.com slash 28 and get in on the fun. And now back to the show. The, the short answer is it would have been really, really tough because there's there's sort of two sides to my, you know, to like the combat uh, military. There is the side where you're in America, right, where you, you could probably find anything that you want to eat as long as you're not away somewhere in remote parts doing training, right? When you, when you go away to those remote parts, it's similar to being deployed overseas, you know, when you're thinking strictly just being deployed somewhere in a foreign country and you have to rely on the military to care for you, you know, give you, provide you your food and stuff, you know, it's you're going to have to just kind of eat what you're given. Now, there are certain foods that don't necessarily have meat, um, like even our, you know, we call them MRE uh, meals ready to eat. It's, it's, it's some, you know, it, it comes in packages that you just kind of heat up on the go. You know, it's, it's very quick. But some of these meals don't necessarily have any meat in it, right? But it doesn't really lend itself very, it, it's sort of like the whole sort of movement of, you know, the beyond meat and so on. It doesn't really lend itself very well to sort of be natural, organic or anything like that. Um, so okay. if you're one of those sort of vegans who are trying to, be as natural as possible you know the 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 mres are not going to be your best bet but again it would be very very tough to sustain because you get issued a lot of times you get issued your food and, and no one is going through your food to make sure that you know your ration is is going to be vegan and as a matter of fact if you you know the military is a very tough environment and so People are going to, you know, make sure that they kind of get that lifestyle out of you because that could become a compromise because we need you to be healthy and strong all the time and not be worried that you might not be eating all your meals because you're trying to be vegan. It would have been really, really difficult. And, you know, I did remember having after I've been, been vegan now for a while, I've been trying to think back to my time in the military like, were there anyone, you know, while I was serving that was like interested in living a non-meat lifestyle? And there might have been like one or two guys I remember that, you know, they shied away from eating meat and they would get made fun of just for that, you know, because it was just not the kind of environment where you shy away from, you know, eating whatever you're given um, to eat. So, so that's the short answer is it would be really, really tough. So let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now with Plantarian. Can you yeah. explain to us what that's all about so we can uh, spread that around? No, yeah. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to kind of describe Plantarian. So Plantarian is a concept that I came up with when I went vegan. And one of the things that I noticed was, you know, we talked about the struggle of going vegan. But then on the flip side, there are people who are very good at being vegan, so to speak. And so a lot of these people are offering services, you know, whether they're health coaches that also offer nutritional services or they're lifestyle coaches that, you know, offer you 
and you know the 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 guide that you need to become vegan or sustain the lifestyle. So I, I started noticing that, and then, so I have somewhat of a tech background, meaning that I've created you know mobile apps before, and so I started thinking about this two sided market, and I said, you know what. I think that a lot, and, and then I also talk with a lot of people who were going plant-based and then reverting back because they said it's so challenging to maintain the lifestyle. And, you know, it was a lot of, what I was hearing is a lot of like, you know, education around sort of how to really sustain a plant-based lifestyle. And so I wanted to, I, you know, I think all of us, when we go plant-based, we want more people to go plant-based. And so I started thinking about sort of creating this hub where people can connect with some service providers that can help guide them as they're trying to transition, as they're trying to sustain plant-based living. And so that's what Plantarian um, essentially is today. It's a place where, you know, if you're a health coach, if you're a plant-based chef, if you're, you know, a lifestyle coach, you list yourself on this platform and then people, it's, it's primarily in the U.S. today, but, you know, we plan to sort of expand this thing to become you know, a global, you know, because plant-based is not just unique to America, as you guys know, or Canada, it's all around the world today. And so what I want people to be able to do is, you know, download our mobile app, search and connect. So the the thing that I like to explain to people how, because a lot of people say, well, how is, how is Plantarian any different than a Google search or anything else? And I say, well, you know, what we're doing is we're creating this centralized place where, you know, when you're curious about plant-based living, you go to this app and only services that you're going to find there are plant-based related services. That's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, this partnership that you're, you're developing with folks, you know, the, uh, the flip side is that there's a supply side where, you know, once people identify that they want to be a plant-based service provider, then they have to make a decision. Do I do this sort of as a part-time or do I do this full-time? And you think about like Uber, you know, people sort of do Uber as a side gig and some people do it as a full-time gig. And so we're just kind of, you know, bringing the supply and demand side together um, with Plantarian. I love that. And I think that it's really going to help people and it is helping people already. And that's the other thing is you look out there and I mean, we even get a ton of requests to come on the plant trainers podcast from health coaches and what have you. And we need to go to their site. We need to go to their Instagram. We need to figure out, are they plant-based? Are they well-known? Do they know what they're talking about? Not even are they well-known, but are they well-respected? And do they know what they're talking about? And where was their education from? And there's so much research to be done. And if we could like quickly look them up on a site like that to at least get through the first round to say, okay, we need to use our time to look further or, "Mm, well, if they're not here, no thanks, because, you know, we want to support the plant-based and vegan world here. So, you know, I, being on the other side, it can totally help save time and really make this plant-based living more sustainable and bring more health to them and their family and the, the people that they love. So I commend you for doing that. That's amazing. Well, essentially, that's why we started this show, right? We wanted to share our knowledge, but also network with other amazing people that are sharing similar messages with as many people as we can. And so that's why we got into podcasting. That's why we got into health coaching and nutrition as well. And so having one place to go to get all the information for the consumer makes a lot of sense and is a very, very helpful kind of thing to have. Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys approve because sometimes, you know, I talk to non-plant-based people and they're just like, who's going to use this? You know, what is this? And, you know, you get those kind of questions and you're, you start to, you start to question whether your, your sanity, but no, I, you know, I appreciate the, the feedback. And you guys touched on uh, a few points, two points, actually, that I wanted to kind of just, you know, just chat about quickly. The education of the plant-based service providers. That's one that I get asked uh, quite often is, you know, how are you vetting these uh, plant-based service providers? And I think it's a really important question because, again, when I talk to a lot of people, they're reverting back from being plant-based. And part of that is some people told me stories about just not feeling healthy when they went plant-based and that's kind of puzzling to me. But one of the things that I I keep hearing is that people feel like they're not getting all the right nutrients when they go plant-based. And so if we're standing up a platform and we're offering plant-based service providers, 
we want to vet them and make sure that they know what they're talking about. And so there are a lot of institutions that are certifying plant-based service providers. So one of the things that I'm working on is really partnering with these institutions to make sure that, you know, we create sort of a, a system that, you know, that really highlights the providers who are uh, accredited, you know, the, the ones that are certified. And so we're working on that. The other, the other aspect of it too is, you know, we don't want to have folks on the platform that are, you know, sort of, you know, part-time vegan and they're promoting the lifestyle. You know, we want, we want people who are true, you know, uh, true to the, to the cause of being uh, plant-based because, you know, if you're going to teach someone about plant-based living, I think you should, you should be yourself. Uh, it's just a, a simple principle. Yeah. I just I wanted to touch on those two things. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And we've also seen a lot of coaches or chefs or influencers fall off the plant-based or vegan yeah. uh, wagon yeah. recently. And, you know, so to the point of people don't feel like they're getting the most nutrients, maybe it's, maybe it's because they're with a coach that doesn't know what they're doing. Maybe it's because they're not with a coach. And I almost feel like when you're ready to go plant-based, you need to like go to a socket. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't say it that way. Cause I don't want anybody to do it. I feel like you need to be zapped and you need to zap away all yeah. of your past learning about nutrition and yeah. start fresh because what people are doing is they're saying, okay, I'm plant-based but I still think carbs are bad. So I'm still going to avoid carbs or, yeah. okay, I'm plant-based, but I shouldn't be eating this. Or I, I still need to portion my food, right? Yeah. I still need to make sure I'm not eating too much. And yeah. when you combine your old knowledge with the plant-based knowledge, that's yeah. when we find people really do Start to get mess in, into yeah. trouble. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. And I, I honestly, as you were talking there, um, I found myself, I was doing that too when I transitioned but you're right. You really just need to think that this is a new way and, and, and sort of forget about all, because, you know, I, as part of your, your edge, your formal education, you learn some things about nutrition. You, you know, me, my story of being in the military, I had to sit through a lot of, you know, classes about nutrition and that all of that was just centered on sort of the standard, you know, American diet. And so when you make a shift, you're trying to incorporate that education into sort of this new thing and it doesn't really fit. So uh, yeah, no, you, you, it's a clean slate. You have to you go memory wipe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And nutrition is probably the most confusing topic on the planet. And you could find people that talk about one side of it and find yeah. other people that talk on a total pop polar end. So right. people are very, very, very confused <laughs> about what to listen to. And right. So having a place to go where there's, scientific evidence and the right people that know what they're talking about because they are certified and they've lived the life and are leading as an example and being a role model makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. And, and that consistency, right? Cause you're right that, you know, the information is being distorted um, and dependent. And even today myself, I, you know, I talk to so many people now that I've been doing the, you know, the, the plantarian and, oh, before I forget, I have to tell you guys about our podcast too. So we, as you were describing, we launched a podcast for the same reason, you know, because when I, when I thought about it and why I was creating plantarian, um, it's, it's those same points that you hit on about, you know, sort of getting information out to people. And so what we've been doing, we, we launched the podcast and we're bringing on people from, you know, the health animal welfare, the environmental sectors, and, you know, and, and so really just getting information and debunk, debunking a lot of the myths around just like, because there's always going to be an excuse why you should not go plant-based, right? And so, but when you hear, you know, really credible people and people know that know what they're talking about, for example, our, our latest guest that we had on was uh, Dr. Neil Bernard. You know, I really enjoyed just sitting down and listening to that guy talking because uh, there are no holes in the things that he's saying. You know, he's giving it to you from experience. He's giving it to you from education and also from, you know, firsthand uh, living. And so when you hear that kind of stuff, you know, you really have to you have to dig deep in order to try to come up with a, a valid excuse of not going plant based. And I, I just think I think it's really important because. You know, these days I talk to a lot of my family members 
who are not plant-based and you know, I tell them, you know, nowadays people try to like avoid me and avoid the topic. And, you know, I tell them, you know, I'm not telling you guys this because I'm trying to be annoying. I'm telling you guys this because I think that it's really, really important. It's, it's, I see, you know, plant-based living as a matter of life and death. And people really need to realize that because, you know, I, I mentioned um, Dr. Bernard on the show recently, and he talked about his early days of, you know, a medical school and performing an, auto- an uh, autopsy on a patient. I mean, uh, on someone that passed away and and just kind of opening up the person and realizing that, you know, they died from food related disease. It's, it's so important because your family, your loved ones, uh, you really just want them to to be healthy, like we started out talking about, you know, you want them to be healthy and and not having having to live a miserable life of, you know, medication and going to the hospital for surgeries. And so this is, you know, I, I tell my older brother, interestingly enough, he's the one who's working at a hospital as a nurse, um, but I am telling him about the benefits of, of living healthy and, you know, and telling them why that I think that every time he talks to me, he's going to hear about plant-based living. <laughs> yeah. The, the truth is that change is very challenging for most people to go through. It's a very difficult process and people need to really be open-minded like you talked about earlier and willing to accept that the change that they could make could be something that could give them life like it did to me and improve their quality of life that they may currently have. So for people that want to learn more about Plantarian or learn more about you, where would you want them to go to check out that information? Yeah. So uh, thank you for that opportunity. So if you want to, you know, learn more about Plantarian, you just, you have, all you have to do is just, you know, type in plantarian.com and that's uh, P-L-A-N-T-A-R-I-O-N, plantarian.com. And, you know, you, once you, you land on our website from there, you can, you know, click on the different uh, social media. You can also check out our podcast, the Plantarian podcast from the website. Our mobile apps are in the respective app stores, the Android and the Apple store. And, you know, so we're on uh, Twitter, Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook. As far as me, uh, same deal. Um, You just, you know, type in Andy Nevers. uh, You'll be able to find me on Instagram, Facebook. And those are the two platforms that I mainly, you know, I'm active on and also on LinkedIn. All right. So we're going to link to all that in our show notes at plantrainers.com. And uh, we want to thank you so much for being here on the Plant Trainers Podcast. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Absolutely. And I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to return the favor and invite you guys over to the Plantarian Podcast here soon. Thank you for having me. It was great chatting and, you know, sharing our stories here. Thank Thank you. you. We're grateful for your time. All right. Have a great day. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with $1 really makes a difference in the quality of the show. And don't forget to connect with us on Instagram and Twitter. Our handle is at plant trainers. Like plant trainers on Facebook, join our newsletter, and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes, a list of our services, and of course, our latest podcast. We encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness. So we hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and and have have a a healthy healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.